So this time last week you were at the Sweeps Festival. Um, how do you feel that went? Because you, you were doing quite a few um, uh, slots there, weren't you? Yeah, really pleased with it. I uh, did three gigs, Songwriters Den on the Sunday. Yeah. So that was, we did half an hour of just, just original songs for that. And then we did um, two slots on the Monday at City Wall Wine Bar and then finishing off on Bowley Hill, which I was that was really the stage I wanted to play at. Yeah. So yeah, that was great. Um, we did a mixture of two original songs and um, and some covers because a lot of my stuff is a bit difficficult for a festival stage. Right. A bit difficult to. Um, <laughs> it was okay. It's okay at some ways. Then I've got probably just enough, but um, I yeah. wanted to just do kind of crowd pleasing and put on a show really. Yeah. So, so what did you do? I, I missed it. I'm afraid. Um, well, you missed getting wet as well then because it you. absolutely poured down right at the start. <laughs> We did um, we did Wagon Wheel by the old Crow Medicine Show um, to start off with because it's a good one to warm up with. Um, we did uh, Closer to Find by the Indigo Girls. Mm -hmm. um, we did River Flow by the Levellers. Uh, we did a song called Cuckoo, an old traditional folk song which was uh, Daniel's choice. Okay. And she sang that one. And we did um, The Devil Went Down to Georgia, and that was our big finale All right. with the Devil. Oh yeah, I saw the, the pictures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was good. But the funny thing was, is that the night before we was at, I was at the Gordon Hotel, so I was Daniel's there as well, and got a call from the guy that I arranged the whole time to do it from hospital. Yeah. He said, "I don't think I'm going to make it." He was actually playing the sweeps himself as well. Right. But um, he'd had a funny turn. He's not been too well, oh, and um, and he sort of rang me up to say, "Look." I think we're gonna make it. So, <laughs> but I cut my first, first friend I had who we all already quite drunk. Yeah. Um, and I knew he's kind of. Like, he's, I've seen him do Santa, so I thought Satan, <laughs> Santa. Just for swapping around. Yeah, boxes. just like, and That's he was well up for it. So. Um, That's good. And he never never breaks a promise. So the next morning, hungover. As hell. <laughs> <laughs> hungover as hell. I won't tell you what he was trying to do when he got home. Um, and uh, but the great thing was. We went to the City Wall wine bar stage, I picked him up, we went straight there. There was this the pebbles, I should plug pebbles, because they did his face for free as long as I plugged them. Pebbles yeah. face painters, right there by the stage. Oh, right. So he had, the, he had a brilliant devil yeah. face. I already had the costume. <laughs> and I'd spray painted a violin. Okay. So he had, so that was, uh, yeah, that, brilliant. he did a great job actually. Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> um, did you get to see much yourself, or were you, were you just in... Performance um, mode. Saw Rasco. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, kind of, for one reason or another, I didn't stick around to see a Hobo Jones afterwards, um, which is a shame because I know they're good, but I've seen them quite a few times. So. Yeah. Um, Fiddle Fit. Mm -hmm. They were hosting the City Hall Wine Bar stage, so they were on before us. Yeah. So, watch them. Um, Whilst my devil was actually listening to the tune and working out his moves right. <laughs> <laughs> on his phone, um, that's how last minute that was. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. Various other ones, but I wouldn't be able to remember the names. No, no. Yeah, mostly I was kind of concentrating on my performances because that was kind of a big thing. For yeah, me. yeah. It came out of kind of no. It came out of a bit of luck because I went down to the uh, board stairs to play the songwriters' den, mm. really with the aim of getting in onto the stage at sweeps just to play okay. sweeps. Yeah. But what happened was right near the end of the set, um, Doug Hudson came in because um, he lives down that way, and yeah. um, and afterwards people said to me, "Oh, he's just asking, like, who are you?" So I kind of plucked up the courage to go and speak to him yeah. and swap some links and stuff. And I just said, you know, if you've got any more sweet slots going, I'm like, well, I've done. yeah. And they came back to me too on the Monday. Yeah. So I actually got them before I got the song right at Denmark. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, how things work out sometimes. So that was nice. <laughs> um, so describe um, sweeps for the the uninitiated, someone who's never heard of it. Um, sweeps it is three days of. Morris dancing mayhem, <laughs> uh, including getting up at an ungodly hour, which I've mm. never, I'm still yet to do. I haven't ticked that one off my, to go and wake Jack up, whoever Jack is, uh, up at Bluebell Hill. Oh right, on yeah. the Monday. Yeah, a uh, guy covered in leaves. Yeah, I, I saw him march past. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so lo loads of jingy jangly um, uh, Morris dancing, generally folk orientated music, five stages. Um, loads of real owl, um, <laughs> some road closures, uh, 
<laughs> Great festival, I love it. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Yeah, it's a brilliant feel to it. Um, I don't know really, I've asked to describe it. No, that's fine. All situated within historic Rochester. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, are you from the Medway area? or? Pretty much, I was born in Gravesend, but uh, I think by the time I was one, I was living in Strood. Okay. So. Then, um, then I graduated to Rochester okay. uh, in my late 20s. I remember the ceremony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I was, oh, it's quite... It's a tear. It's uh, just <laughs> over the bridge. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, it's essentially, yeah, Midway. Okay. Forever. Yeah. yeah. Um, and what, what was, what's your first sort of musical memory? What, what do you, uh, um, what do you first remember? Probably Queen. Queen. Yeah, I, I actually didn't believe or understand that there was any other band that no? existed for quite some years. Yeah. Was that parents? Or, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Used to bellow along to it in the car. Yeah. And occasionally one of them would turn the volume completely down and then just carry on. Okay. And then it would go back up perfectly in sync. Oh. That's how brainwashed I was. On Pick up green. song for yeah. I'm sorry I haven't a clue. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so so that's your probably... favourite Queen song would be? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't listened to him in a long time. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, no. That you know, that's the first thing that springs to mind. Um, yeah. Yeah. My dad always, um, my dad played. He always had guitars lying around the house. Uh, so you kind of in inherited the bug. From... Uh, sort of, but I didn't really pick it up properly till I was kind of late teens, really. To be okay. Honest. I always found them quite hard to play. Yeah. Um, what 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 was it that made you want to pick it up? And... Um, I think. Do you know what? I, I kind of anticipated you might ask a question a bit like that, yeah. and I still haven't got an answer for it. Okay. Um, <laughs> probably the idea of not having to work a normal job and good. do music yeah. instead. Yeah. 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 I used to do little demos on a little four track, Fostex four track for you, use the old tapes. Yeah. So, you know, you split it into the four, the eight, mm. the side, and the stereo side. And, and uh, yeah, I, 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 got a, I used to have a stack of rejection letters from record companies. <laughs> I thought I had, I had a, um, an idea one day that one day somebody would realise the brilliance of the music yeah. and then what I'd do is I'd fan them out on the floor and take a photo and that would be the front cover of the album. Yeah. But... No. And... No. <laughs> <laughs> the naivety. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you remember the first song you wrote at all? Ah, oh, no. I have got like, I, I, I wrote like an album when I was in my early 20s. Mm -hmm. I was still at university and I did it myself and I've still got the equipment. I've got this uh, digital 12 track um, I bought. Um, in fact, I just started working because I bought it with my first two months pay. And it was pretty much the whole two months pay. And, uh, and I started, so I, I kind of recorded that and then I, I rediscovered it because I always kept it and I put it onto, this was like way before iTunes and yeah and streaming media and stuff like that and I just thought, oh, and I'm still quite proud of some of those songs actually. So I couldn't say which one was the first one I wrote, mm -hmm. probably not one that made it to that collection, yeah. um, but uh, I kind of found it again and stuck it up on uh, like Spotify and all that. Yeah. It's quite so easy now, just for prosperity. Yeah. I think... Um, I think in, I think I calculated in about ten years I can probably buy a beer from the, a whole beer. the revenue wow. of people listening to it on Spotify, <laughs> which is mostly me. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 these days you go by the name of the Lo-Fi Way. Yeah, so, yeah. What, what's that? I'd, well, that? Um, yeah. Uh, I never really wanted to go under my name. I always, when I did things originally, I used to sit, I didn't, never had the courage to play live anyway. So I used to sit and I used to layer the songs up. I'd play all the instruments myself. Okay. Um, and it was all home recorded. So ultimately, and I went under a different name. I, I, I chose a different name then. I chose The Lead Feathers, mm -hmm. which is a line from um, Romeo and Juliet. I took it out for example, that was clever. Um, but, um, but essentially, I kind of I didn't want to go under that anymore, and but I still wanted to go under a different name, so I chose a name that kind of described the music. So it's kind of low fidelity sound music, not deliberately, just because yeah. I've never 
invested to go into a proper recording studio. I just thought I'd do it all myself. <laughs> so it ends up, no matter how good you try to do it, sounding very lo-fi. Yeah. And then so I kind of like the word waves because it kind of has multiple meanings. Could be yeah. sound waves, couldn't it? It could be waves of the sea. Yeah. And stuff like that. But other than that, I kind of... I don't like overthinking anything, so it was probably just the first thing that came in my head, which is much, pretty much how the song's come about too. Okay, so, yeah. yeah. And you've, the uh, last couple of weeks, months, you've teamed up with Danielle? Met uh, Danielle you, two months happen? before Sweeps. Okay. Um, at the Flipping Frog Sunday Jam. And I'd already had it, as soon as I got the slots at the Sweeps, I'd had it in my mind, I want to play with a fiddle player. Right. Because it Sweeps. Yeah. And um, kind of fits, and, and I like that kind of music, I like the sound. And um, there's about three that go to the Flipping Frog on a, on a Sunday jam. Mm -hmm. But um, one of them's far too professional for me, <laughs> far too talented. Not that Daniel's not talented, <laughs> but he's like insanely talented, um, and I'll probably have to pay him. Uh, the other one, already was playing sweeps in various guises anyway. Yeah. And then I met Danielle, never seen Danielle before. So by process of elimination, I said to Danielle, um, I've got Truth I've got down. I've got some I've got some 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 slots at sweeps. Oh she was good too. Oh, right. I, I did check her out. I thought I'm not playing with any old rubbish. You've got to be good but not too good. Yeah, so she fit the bill. There's I've a got my two yeah, yeah, no, it is. It is, yes. You know, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, <laughs> not as good as Justin. <laughs> well, not not intimidating. Yeah. That's it. No, I didn't want in. in I, don't, I can't have intimidation. Okay. I find it makes me nervous. So I get really nervous when I play. Fair enough. So I kind of felt comfortable with Danielle, and um, so I offered it to Danielle. Danielle said, "I'm all over that," in a Canadian accent. Uh, yeah. And so at that point, and I did say at the time, I said, two months is not long." And it wasn't, was it? Yeah. And uh, so, how much practicing did you did you get to do? Really, not. Like, no, that's great. Well, I suppose that's you, but, uh, fairly. Uh, every opportunity. Um, but even so, like it kind of felt it was going up to the wire. Right up to the last minute, we were changing some of the structure of the songs and things because a lot of my songs are very short. Yeah. Um, so I kind of realised a bit silly, very near um, the end, that I needed to at least put one more song in and extends the length of one or two of the others. <laughs> so we kind of like was changing it around towards the end, which is not really how you should prepare for a set, really. You'd kind of had it pretty much down, mm. but, but it all went okay. So, yeah. Okay. And Danielle, how have you found working with Paul over the last couple of months? It's been great, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's been great. I mean, it's Despite been... the lack of payment and lack of compliments. Oh, oh, I'm yeah, going no. to split, I'm going to split the fee. <laughs> but I haven't been paid, Medway Council haven't paid me yet. <laughs> but I've invoiced them. <laughs> you have to invoice them. Oh, there's hoops you have to jump through. Oh, they don't just come up and oh. give you, like, like, the money. Yeah. <laughs> well, he just basically lets me you do my own thing, really. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I kind of say to him, no, that's too fast. No, that's too slow. No, do it like this. More even, please. <laughs> yeah. I'm happy to give Danielle like pretty much free artistic license, really, to write around the violin, around yeah. what I'm doing. Um, but sometimes it's uh, it simply kind of mimics the vocal melody, and that works really nice. And, yeah. You know. Um, so I'm just kind of like really, really thrilled to have done it with violin. Okay. Danielle really helps. Great. So, would it be some something you'd want to do again in the future, sort of working with, with other people? Yeah, I yeah. think that's one of the one of the reasons why maybe I kind of left it as a kind of sounded like a band's name as well. Okay, is that you know? So it never has been a band. No, it's just been you. So only me. It's only ever been yeah. me. A bit like um, I should have chosen a name a bit more like Badly Drawn Boy or something like that. It's kind of like it could be either, couldn't it? It kind <laughs> of sounds like a band, but um, no, it's always just been me. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Ready? Here we are. Yeah. Okay. On the hillside, the only phone blanks on the Hey, he's a fun, will the 
the sort of songwriting process work you I think you've said on your website it's um, a stream of consciousness yeah. kind of thing and you sort of alluded that to that earlier on yeah so it's got I'm really like not um, not an accomplished kind of writer so what I do is pretty much the music comes first and it'd be very basic so it'd be a few chords then um, then I kind of hum a melody around it and then when it comes to the words I, I literally like a bit like the band name, I just write down the first thing that comes into my head. Mm -hmm. um, and what that often means is that I end up interpreting the meaning of the song after I've written it. Right, okay. Um, and then, which can be confusing and frightening. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and sometimes I know where it's come from, or certain lines. Yeah. And other times it's just a work of fiction that comes from nowhere. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay. that's it. That's how. That's it. It's just I can't write any way. I can't write to a brief or anything <laughs> like that. So I'm not a songwriter. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, I don't know what it's called. It's probably not called songwriting. <laughs> I think when I, I was lucky actually because um, I had a, a, an opportunity to do one song to support like a bit of a hero of mine, which was Mark Chadwick from the Levelers. Right. Did a secret gig in Rochester last year, and um, so I did like the most poppy, crowd pleasing song that I've I've written. Um, and then managed to chat to him at the end, and I said to him, most of my stuff, it's like, you know, it's a bit sombre, mm -hmm. a bit melancholy. And he said, well, he said, 
He said, it's all you can do. Um, you're just a conduit. Yeah. Um, and uh, I really like that. Yeah. Because that, did, that, that did kind of sum it up, actually. Yeah, I drank about 12 pints of um, bitter at that point. Okay. But, um, <laughs> but I think it made him wiser. <laughs> uh, but uh, I liked, I mean, yeah, that, that kind of, that does sum it up. Yeah. It was like, yeah, so I kind of like, you know, um, somewhere in my consciousness the words come out but really they're more about I'm more interested in them working as songs rather than being deeply meaningful because mm -hmm. it's not poetry yeah. so that's why I kind of <coughs> write down the sounds that seem to fit the chords as, I, as I'm playing through them mm -hmm. and then they form words yeah uh, and then I kind of try to continue that process so that's why I kind of call it like a stream of consciousness kind of writing yeah um, and if I get all the way through and I get a whole bunch of words to a song, I consider myself pretty lucky. Yeah. Really. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I don't really worry too much where they came from. There's a lot of um, references to nature in, in your songs. I picked yeah. some out. Um, you've got Grasshoppers, that's another song. Yeah. Healing Pastures, Cleaner Shores, Frost in the Air. Um, you've got your song Hello Narrow Plateau features uh, White Doves, Singing Birds, Tepid Rain, and a and there's a dormouse thrown in as well. Oh god, you've, you've really worked through all those demos off the site. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> oh man, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, there is, you're right. Side. I've noticed there's fireflies as well. This yeah. is one of the ones I was going to do. Yeah, um, yeah. interesting that, isn't it? Autumn Leaves is mm. another song which we might do. Daniel does some really nice violin on that, so. Um, yeah, like, your guess is as good as mine, really. I don't really know why <laughs> that is. I like that, though. I like it, but I don't yeah. know why it comes about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, can't explain it. Um, and the, th the thing I've, I've found about you from, from seeing you perform and, and uh, watching um, YouTube videos of you, there's there's a mixture between infinite sort of sadness and you, you sort of touched on that and um, you, you are something of a showman as well. I mean, you, there's a, a clip of you doing "Mamma Mia" by ABBA. <laughs> <laughs> um, would I you say that. you're a glass half full or half empty kind of person? Um, <laughs> oh yeah, like uh, yeah, half full. I would hope, yeah. but like without a doubt. Um, even when I, even going back to sort of like, like it'd be like pretty much 20 years ago when I was mucking about and you know recording stuff in the bedroom and all sorts of things. It, 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 I think it might be a mixture of the sort of just the stuff I was into at the time and mm. continue to listen to. So you know I was kind of really heavily into like the Smiths and REM, which is, Smiths is like it's not necessarily miserable music, of course, but it's often seen that way. Yeah. And some of it is very sad. Yeah. Um, and you know I really like things like Kings. Kings of Convenience and yeah. that, that kind of music, so which again is playful but sad. But um, a lot of them, are, you know, I probably won't go into it right now. But you know, some <laughs> some of my stuff is born out of kind of um, very sad experiences. Yeah. Uh, and probably you know some of the most more creative moments are yeah. are. You know, I know where they've come from, and it might not even be very obvious, but it's more of a feel. Yeah. Um, kind of captures probably what I was feeling at the time, but that's why I call them snapshot songs. Snapshot songs sometimes because they're kind of like um, it's a bit like, you know, um, taking a photo of a very very sad moment. Yeah. That's what it's like for me. Yeah. So um, you know, you're not necessarily always motivated to record happy moments because you're too busy enjoying them mm. to note them down. Yeah. Um, but sometimes, you know, that's when there's something that creates the need to record yeah. it in some way. Yeah. Um, and then, then it's gone, and mm. I, then it's a record of it. But that doesn't mean that, in actual fact, I'm actually probably, hopefully, quite pleasant company. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> most of the time, rather than miserable. <laughs> but um, but if we go go through my songs, yeah, you will probably find a balance of more sadness. Yeah. It seems. Yeah. Um, so w when I write a song that's actually fairly actually quite happy and poppy, then I also consider myself even double lucky. Yeah. Which has happened yeah. on occasion. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, obviously, 
don't want to go into the you know the finer details of where the songs have come from because um, that wouldn't be fair. But um, would you say songwriting is a is a sort of a healing process? Yeah, mm -hmm. much like anything, like you could write poetry or you could paint yeah. or you could you know make a film or something. Um, it you could nip a jumper. <laughs> yeah, that's very yeah. Good. <laughs> you know, um, you could, yeah, like, but yeah, but it is absolutely. It, might, it has to be, yeah. yeah. It, do, it does feel that way, yeah. Yeah. And it's it's a, you can kind of, for me, I suppose, because I still play songs that are born out of <coughs> very very, you know, feeling not too great at that particular time. Yeah. Um, but then it just you kind of let it go, and it's just not really a problem, mm. you know. And I'll play them if I still effort. I think they're quite good songs. Yeah. Which isn't, you know, a lot of stuff like anybody, I throw it away. But, you know, if I kind of, on reflection, when I look back, I think, well, actually, you know, it's quite a powerful song. Yeah. And actually, normally, even I can reinterpret them to mean something else, even myself, you know, that's yeah. not what, I know what they're about, but I can see actually, for someone else, it might mean something different. Yeah. Um, so... So you're not reliving the whole awful experience no. of the song you it then. No, no, <laughs> no, I'm quite happy for, you know, um, likewise there's a few songs like this, one of my ones that we did at Sweeps, which is Balinese Monkeys, which is just a, a, about as pop song as I've managed to get so far, and that yeah. came out of nowhere, and, that, and that's got a very specific story behind it, which is quite a, you know, a sweet um, kind of context to it, so sometimes I explain that before I play that song. Yeah. Um, and so I'll get... It was you your know, supreme jealousy of your girlfriend being in Bali while you were <laughs> never, Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah basically. In Feb it was February and I was here. It was, very, it was even colder than usual. Yeah. Yeah. She was going to... She had problems like being woken up by some geckos. Awful. Terrible business. Terrible. I sort of felt for her, so yeah. <laughs> so that's you know that's a, that's sort of one of the fewer examples of um, yeah of of songs that have, you know they got got a happy element to them. Yeah. But I I, I I like playing both. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Otherwise, you know, there's no point in doing anything. I'd have to try and write some more happy songs. <laughs> it, won't, it won't happen. <laughs> not if it's forced. Yeah. No. Of course not. Of course. I'll give it a go. It might if it don't work, just don't use it. Search for how to mend. 
If we could paint a scene With fields of green And live between But surely learn to face Every passing thought With grace Hold on To the common ground Um, so you've mentioned uh, what the Smiths, Kings of Convenience. What what song out there do you, you think? I wish I'd written that. Um, there's a song uh, by um, REM called "You Are the Everything," okay. actually, and um, that's off the Green album, and I. I often come back to that album as a as a kind of what the, one of the perfect examples of a mixture of pop, just radio friendly pop, but also like really powerful kind of moving songs as well. And yeah, and you know, it's kind of got the perfect balance for me. Um, and that one I always come back to because, uh, and I, you know, I suppose I'd, yeah, I'd love to have written that song. When you take the words outside of the song, which I did one time, I kind of didn't like them, <laughs> but in the context of the song, in the music. It kind of, you know, kind of always makes me feel a bit, yeah, yeah. So that's the first one that comes to mind. Yeah, you are the everything by R.E.M. Yeah. Okay. Um, th there's quite a, a few other musicians around Medway. Um, are, are there any in particular that you you you'd like, or is it just you? <laughs> I don't really like me. I think I'm terrible. <laughs> I feel like I, 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 that's why I said yes, yes this straight away. I love feeling like I'm a proper musician in amongst the rest of Medway's finest. Um, yeah, I like all of them. I really like like um, Davy Davy Malone. I've got to say, you know, he you know gave me a great little opportunity um, mm -hmm. at this the secret gig that I mentioned earlier. Um, and he is he's you know he's very entertaining. You said you know kind of he's an example, I suppose, of. I think it's important not to just get up and play the songs. Yeah. Um, but to kind of uh, not elevate yourself particularly above anybody else in the crowd. Yeah. And I like, get that connection and engagement because that is a show. That is really. And for me as well, I never thought I would really do that. But I kind of felt like it's important to do that. So I've yeah. kind of, it's quite, kind of partly natural, partly work, Tom, if I'm honest. Yeah. And I think he does that very well. Yeah. Um, so, you know, he's got his two bands. Um, I really like the flowing, really like them locally. Yeah. Um, obviously they've got the violin in there as well, and like that really nice Americana folk mm -hmm. sound. Um, but uh, I just, um, I just really like enjoy being you know, going down, say for example, all you know, any artist that plays down at Flipping Frog on the regular acoustic sessions down there, I just try to get to as much as often, as, often yeah. as possible. Um, and, uh, you know, you've got, you know, Stuart Turner, it's another, you know, um, local name. Um, I, I can't really, I can't really fault any of them. I love them. I like being, I, li I like being part of the scene as much as I can. Yeah. Um, yeah, because I only, I only really got into it like 
start of 2015, yeah. fumbling through three songs that seasonally affected, yeah. um, half pounding, <laughs> never forget, and, uh, and kind of took it from there really. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like everything, everything is an achievement still, yeah, yeah. yeah. and it like, will continue to be. Mm. So Sweeps was an achievement. We'll play the Flipping Frog, um, I'm going to do it with Danielle later this month, that'll be the second time. Last one was very, very hard. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm hoping this one goes a bit better. So the fact that the last one was a bit of a chore, yeah, um, it was a bit of a battle for me, um, kind of allows me to maybe exercise those demons from last time. Yeah, with the support from Danielle, they've got stage now as well, though of course. Right. So I'll be at least as tall as everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> And, and will you be handing out your legendary egg shakers? Oh well, if I can, if I can get round to making some more, each one is unique. Yeah. Um, yeah. If I get some more, uh, some white paint, yeah. some cheap egg shakers, and some sharpie pens. Yeah. And I can sit here, then make no mistake, come down. It's the only time you ever get one. Okay. Yeah, I saw one going on eBay for eighty-five quid. I think it was. <sighs> I oh, know, it's like ticket towels. Oh, I hate that. Yeah. Don't good. buy them. No. 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 <laughs> okay, here we go. Ready? Yeah. Did you see the grasshopper graceful skip? Show stop the phrase in sullen pain. Only when the beat soften, stretch her limbs so often, song and contemplate
you think there's a reason why there's um, so much music in Medway? It's a question I've asked quite a few people over the, over the years. Oh, wow. What, m more so than anywhere else, do you think? Possibly. I mean, in, in, in my experience of having lived in other places, I've bit more. not seen as much. Mm. I've not really thought about it. I don't know. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> there's, a lot of, there's a lot of stuff to write about. The tree huggers were good at sweeps. Should mention tree huggers. Tree huggers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because um, one of them was was going to be my devil. <laughs> he did manage to play his gigs though, so he that's the, okay. The hospital. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he got back from hospital in time to play his gigs. Um, and the, he writes some great tunes about the area. Yeah. And um, maybe it's something like maybe it's like maybe not all areas lend themselves to writing songs about them. And if they lend themselves that much to people writing songs about the area, then maybe they lend themselves to musicians and mm -hmm. sort of. I know that when I kind of first got into it, um, really I didn't realise I didn't realise the creativity in the area until probably 2014, mm -hmm. um, and actually it's for whatever people say about Midway, it's an amazing place. Not just songwriters, you know, all sorts of creative people. Well, quite why I don't know, but um, yeah. yeah, I'm lucky to be here. Yeah, I think I think I just. It's just one of those things. Just there are yeah, maybe so. Who... <laughs> That's a better answer. Actually, I was trying to come up with something really like. Let's cut it, and I'll say it's just one of those things. Okay, okay. Let's it's do just that. one of those things. Yeah. Cut. I think it's some people personally. You know, the, the, the creative people here. You know, they, they sort of there's the kind of a bohemian thing here. I don't know. Yeah. Well, because yeah. yeah. where you come from in Canada, it's not quite. Oh, it's this not. Is... Nothing, no, no, I've never, I've never lived anywhere where there's, and I've, like you, yeah, I've lived in a lot of different places and yeah. in se in several different countries, and never been anywhere like this. No, where this kind of scene. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Not well, even in Canada. Not even in Canada. Medway better than Canada. <laughs> Medway is better than Canada. You heard <laughs> it there first. Uh, and uh, plans for the future? You got a gig coming up at uh, Frog and Fiddle. Uh, flipping frog. Flip, flipping frog. Sorry, oh, frog and fiddle. Uh, flipping frog. I like that though. Um, <laughs> flipping frog on the twenty third of May. Yeah. Episode twenty third of May. So me and Danielle are going to probably repeat some of the songs that we did at Sweeps. Yeah. But do some new stuff in there as well. Okay. And I'm hoping that I can kind of play my a few more of my normal, rather more melancholy, sad tunes, and that they won't seem quite so out of place in a little micro pub. Okay. Um, and we are playing the Sandwich Folk Festival in, was it June or July? July. July. Right. Uh, those are the two main dates, really. That's, for me, that's a tour. That, yeah. That's, I'm going to get t-shirts done? That's a tour. Um, yeah, maybe so. T-shirts and eggs. Yep. And then that will buy a beer. <laughs> <laughs> And that's it. That's, that's it. my that that is my musician life. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. That's great. And, and more songs c uh, coming out. Uh, yeah, I hope so. <coughs> I hope so. I do. I did write a new song kind of a little while ago, but I'm still got the I've still got la 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 la's over like the little kind of break bit in it, and I haven't got any words for it. Okay. I'd like to finish it and play it with Flipping Frog actually. Okay. If I can. That's a but, challenge. Um, yeah, I might set myself. That's a little challenge. Good. Yeah, so. Like a lot we're going to be doing in the next, like, what is it, three weeks we have? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Such a pessimist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we just did sweeps. The, great, the, the greatest music festival in the world. Yeah. 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 Anyway, thanks very much for, for talking to me. Uh, it's been Thank fantastic. You. And um, I'll see you again soon then. Thank you. Thanks. You on the BVs? <laughs> <laughs> you know you wanna. <laughs> you know you wanna. Are you ready? Yeah.
skies Life unfolds with ease Blue skies They swallow you, swallow you Flowers rise They follow you, follow you Natural highs They borrow you, borrow Wake you in the morning, butterflies mesmerize the tree. Yawns and sighs, just as day is dawning, soaking in the sweet barley heat. Blue skies, they swallow you, swallow you. Marvellous. That's it. That's great. Thank you. That's it. I will now switch this off. <laughs>